Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Kev, good morning. Mamoya, good morning. ENS, good morning. Welcome to this virtual portal of prayer. My name is Melody and this is House of Hosting Heaven. We are a prayer movement that the Lord is using to draw people closer and closer and closer to my goodness, <laughs> closer and closer and closer and closer to himself in the place of prayer. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Oh, Father, we bless your holy name. Oh, be exalted, King of glory, be exalted, Lord of hosts. Be exalted, Father. Prayer governors, I think some of you, some of you are doing some strange things in the place of prayer. I, I don't want to lie. <laughs> I just had one of our, um, uh, our, our web tickets uh, pages open. So I'm trying to get it out of the way so we can begin our prayer session today. And I'm refreshing and I'm noticing that the numbers are more than what, how I left them yesterday. But I thought tickets had finished. Are you praying tickets into being? <laughs> are, you, are you praying tickets into being? Prayer governors, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. We had already overbooked by 40 people. But this morning, I'm noticing that we have overbooked by 60 people, which means 20 people got tickets. And I don't know how you got these tickets. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how people are getting tickets. I don't know how, pe how, how, wh how, what's happening. Prayer governors, I want to thank you so very much. Johannesburg for your amazing, 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 amazing response to the upcoming prayer gathering happening on the 27th uh my husband and i are in all uh we had a number we had said we're going to be hosting 200 of you <laughs> we had told our venue hosts that we need uh, we're going to be hosting 200 of you we had started making plans and preparations for 200 or 200 of you and you said no ma'am no 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 this is this is not how we do it in Johannesburg. You don't limit us like that. If I tell you that we have a waiting list right now that has been growing throughout the whole of yesterday, people who are saying, woman of God, I was not able to get a ticket, but I have to be there. Please, please get me in there. Get me in the room. So currently we have um, 252 people that have tickets 252 people we are already overbooked by 50 people and we have a waiting list that has been growing throughout the whole of yesterday so i don't know prayer governors i don't know i don't know what you want us to do i don't know what you want us to do and there's a prayer governor right now on this broadcast who had actually sowed a seed uh for us to cater for you but the at the rate at which you are growing i don't know if we can feed you any longer <laughs> So somebody please just celebrate God with me in the comment section. Celebrate Jesus with me. There is a hunger in the city for prayer. There is a hunger in the city uh, 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 for people to just encounter the presence of God. And we are elated that God could use us in a small way um, to, just, uh, to just feed a bit of that hunger. Um, and we're super excited and expectant about the 27th. We are planning a beautiful, beautiful, well-curated morning for you. Uh, that is going to be a, a time of 
prophetic prayers and declarations into the new month so we're super excited and expecting to see you uh we are still talking to our venue uh host um to just see if we can increase capacity the venue itself has an ability to increase capacity we just need to make sure that we have their permission um in jesus mighty name because we don't want the permission to change the venue uh the venue fees hello somebody hello somebody hello somebody uh, we've already paid the deposit for our venue so it's exciting 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 that's just some house uh some house 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 um uh, that's just some house announcement as we begin our time of prayer, but we are so excited to be hosting you. Prayer governors, this morning, I believe that the Lord has given me a mandate on this um, uh, on this live broadcast, and I, and I believe that the Lord has somebody in mind. Um, I believe that somebody has the, the Lord has somebody in mind, and if you have your Bible with you, I want you to open to a scripture that is fairly popular and I really believe that the Lord is going to give us um, some wisdom from this ministration of the scripture today. It is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1, we're going to be reading from verse 1 to 7. How many of you are coming to the Johannesburg uh, prayer gathering? Uh, just lift up your hand if you already have your ticket. First Samuel, Samuel chapter one, we're reading from verse one to verse seven. If you got your ticket already, if you were one of the early birds, you said, I can't miss this. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. If you have a ticket, show by a lifting of hands. Show by a lifting of hands. My goodness. If you have a ticket already, show by a lifting of hand. Just say, I'm, I'm, I'm in the room on the 27th. I got my ticket. Some of you were getting three tickets. Some of you were getting five tickets for you and your whole family. I am in awe, awe of what God is doing in Johannesburg and we're super excited. Father, I thank you for today's word. Today is not Freedom Friday, but I believe that you have released a deliverance grace into the atmosphere. I believe that there is someone on this broadcast that has been experiencing frustration in the place of their destiny. But Father, you are about to break it in the name of Jesus. I believe that there is somebody that has been experiencing torment, torture in the place of their destiny. But you are about to deliver them this morning in the matchless name of Jesus. I believe that there is somebody on this broadcast that has been experiencing some interesting, strange things that take place right on the verge of their breakthrough. But I believe that this morning you're about to release that breakthrough into their hands in the name of Jesus because the knowledge that is coming it is bringing with it deliverance in Jesus mighty name your word says my people perish for a lack of knowledge but I thank you that as knowledge is released over this broadcast that there is a mighty anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage that is about to break people out of unanswered prayers that is about to break people out of corners that the enemy had them in that is about to to break people out of barrenness that is about to break people out of circumstances where they have been tied for long but i thank you king of glory for your anointing that is available on demand for us this morning you are shifting someone's circumstance you are changing someone's situation in the matchless name of jesus let your word be alive let your word be active let your word be sharper than a double-edged sword ready to pierce asunder to the separating of bone and marrow separate people from circumstances that have been holding them hostage in areas and places of disadvantage this morning in the matchless name of Jesus we pray amen and amen amen and amen the book of first Samuel chapter 1 we're going to be reading from verse 1 to verse 7 a popular scripture I pray that the Lord gives you a new and a fresh dimension to the scripture this morning and today's administration I have entitled no more manipulation God bless you Sharon our new subscriber that's a way of partnering with the platform and just saying woman of God I love what's happening here this is my family this is my way small way of partnering with what you are doing doing we we have things that are happening we have an upcoming uh, uh, event that we are that that, that 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 we are taking care of literally you know um and so this is where some of these uh, this these finances uh, go to we have a conference 
uh, 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 that needs uh, uh, support and, and sponsors as well. So thank you so much. So no more manipulation. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. If somebody could write both of them. Elmadri, if you are here, if you could do that for me. If not, anybody in the comment section and I will pin it. The Bible says, Now there was a certain man of Ramathim Zophim of the mountains of Ephraim. And his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zaph, and Ephraimite. And Ephraimite. Verse 2 says, and he had two wives. The Bible says, the name of one was Hannah. Eh, and the name of the other was Penina. The Bible says Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. All right, the Bible says in verse 3, this man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord, the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. The Bible says also the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. Verse 4 says, and whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina and... Penina, his wife, and all her sons and daughters. And isn't it strange that the Bible says that the sons were Peninas? <laughs> the Bible says uh, 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 the sons were Peninas. Ah, also, the two sons, um, it says whenever the time came, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and all her sons and daughters. Okay, the Bible says, but to Hannah, he would give a double portion for he loved Hannah. Oh, so there is a wife that has children, uh, uh, da daughters and sons. And the Bible says that he would give his wife a portion to sacrifice. And the Bible says, but to, to, uh, uh, to the other wife whose name was Hannah, who did not have children, he would give a double portion for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. Verse 6 says, and her rival also provoked her severely and made her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. Have you ever had somebody weaponize your weakness? Have you ever had somebody weaponize your weakness? Royal Wendy, we call that spamming. The moot is a spam, so I want to encourage you to stop um, uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're here to worship the Lord. We're here to pray. We're, we're not here to look for, love, for, for followers. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. The Bible says her rival also provoked her severely and would make her miserable because the Lord had closed the womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she pro, pro, uh, provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Now that's powerful right there. The Bible says it, it happened that year upon year as they were uh, going to the house of the Lord, uh, uh, Penina would strategically, she would strategically ruffle Hannah's feathers. She would strategically provoke Hannah and it would happen that Hannah would not eat and Hannah would weep. And by the time they arrived to worship, ah, by the time they would arrive to worship, Hannah would be so distressed. And this continued to happen over and over and over again throughout the years. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I want to make a prophetic declaration that no more manipulations in your life. Hey, no more manipulation in your life. I want to focus on verse seven. It says it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that Penina would provoke her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. I want to speak about something called manipulation, demonic manipulation. I know it's not a Freedom Friday prayer, governors, but there is a reason why the Lord would send me with a mandate on a, on a Wednesday to speak about this. Somebody needs it. Somebody needs it. Demonic manipulation is a demonic enticement to do things you would not do ordinarily. It is an enticement to do or behave in a way that you would not behave ordinarily. 
it can also be defined as the capture of one's reasoning. There are some of you prayer governors, when you are on the verge of your breakthrough, there is demonic manipulation that is taking place. It is the capturing of one's reasoning ability. It is, it is, it, it is forcing someone to conform, conform to the wishes of the manipulator. It is the enticement by someone or something or a system to do things you would not ordinarily do. So prayer governors, in this story that we are reading, we are finding that Penina had studied and mastered the right time to strike Hannah in the progression of her struggle. Oh, it's going to get good in a moment. It's going to get really good in a moment. Penina... One of the wives had studied and mastered her sister, studied her behavior, and studied where she could potentially receive her breakthrough. And she had mastered the right time to strike. I want you to know that there are some circumstances that are taking place in your life. There are some attacks that are taking place in your life. There is an in, in, intensifying of, 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 of the weaponry of the enemy over your life in specific seasons. And I want the Lord to expose that tonight. I want the Lord to expose that this afternoon, this morning, depending on whatever time zone you are connecting from. Penina studied and mastered the right time to strike Hannah in the progression of her barrenness. Prayer governors, she knew when the intensity of her attacks were required to keep Hannah bound. Penina knew, Penina knew that the time uh, when they were supposed to go to worship the time when they were supposed to go and offer a sacrifice to the Lord. She understood by way of the spirit that this was the time where Hannah's breakthrough was most likely to happen. Tiwa Ministries, we call that spamming. We need you to stop it or we will block. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. So Penina knew when she needed to intensify her mockery. Penina knew when she needed to intensify her disrespect towards Hannah. Penina knew when she needed to intensify her torment. She knew that if Hannah left the house crying, if Hannah left the house without eating anything, if Hannah left the house despising her God, if Hannah left the house discouraged, disdained, if Hannah left the house perturbed, she knew that, she, that Hannah would not be able to connect to a breakthrough. Prayer governors, there are some things that are happening in your life on the verge of your breakthrough because Penina understands that you are on the verge of your breakthrough. Penina has studied and understands the place where you are potentially about to receive your answered prayer. Isn't it strange prayer governors that there are some really potent seasons in your life where God is about to break you into a new season. And it's so strange because those are the times when you experience the greatest attacks. Those are the times when you experience the intensification of the attacks in your marriage, the intensification of the attacks at the office, through your boss, through your work colleagues, through your department colleagues, through your CEO, through your children. Some of you, you have experienced some of your greatest attacks in seasons where you are about to receive your breakthrough because Penina understands when to intensify the mockery. Prayer governors, just before the family would go to the house of the Lord, Penina would intensify her provocation. She would intensify her mockery, her torment, her harassment. She would intensify her attacks. She would inc increase pressure. She would apply pressure on Hannah. She would take her agitation of Hannah to the extreme because she understood that year after year, whenever she did this, Hannah would go up to the house of the Lord. And instead of worshiping the Lord, Hannah 
would mock the Lord. Hannah would, would, would be frustrated in the presence of the Lord. Hannah would be crying in the presence of the Lord. She would not be proficient enough to legislate concerning her destiny. Who am I speaking to this morning? So demonic manipulation. It is when you intentionally capture someone's reasoning ability. It is enticing someone to do things that they would not do ordinarily. Hannah understood where her breakthrough lay. But, but every time she would go to that place, she would not be postured correctly. Because somebody had ruffled her feathers a few hours before. Somebody had spent the week working on her, on her nerves. So, so that so, uh, she, somebody had spent the week intensifying that provocation, that agitation, that attack, that mockery, that torment. So for years, when Hannah went to offer sacrifices to the Lord, she was distraught. She was in pain. She was angry. She was mourning. She was likely complaining to the Lord. There are some of you, when you are on the verge of your breakthrough, the enemy does things in your life. He agitates you to the point where by the time you come into prayer, all you do is to complain. All you do is to complain. You are not standing in your power as a believer. You are not standing in your authority as a believer. You are not taking up your legislat legislative jurisdiction. You are not taking authority and power over that strong man, over that strong uh, stronghold. You are not negotiating with God in prayer because you are too distraught. And the enemy knows this. That's why he frustrates you all the time. All the time you are about to encounter your breakthrough. Prayer governors, Penina understood that the place of Hannah's breakthrough was a place of worship. And if ever Hannah went there rightfully postured, she could receive a breakthrough. So she decided to torment Hannah every time before they went to sacrifice. Prayer governors, there are some moments in your life that you need to safely guard. There are some moments in your life that are so spiritually sensitive. You need to guard them. God bless you, prayer pals. May God increase where you're taking. God bless you, Mamoyo. There are moments in your life that you need to safely guard. You need to jealously defend. You need to have the discernment and the awareness to be able to recognize when there are some breakthroughs that are about to take place in your life and you must be able to decipher and to discern the hand of the enemy when he is trying to frustrate you. Have you been safeguarding the, the destiny defining moments in your life? Or you have been walking oblivious of the fact that you are about to step into your next season. You are about to step into your breakthrough. You have permitted the enemy to torment you, to mock you, to harass you, and to frustrate you in moments where your focus, woo, your focus should be on one thing. God, where's my son? God, where is my son? God, when are you dealing with this barrenness? God, I need breakthrough in my life. Some of you are too distracted. God bless you, Sitembile. Some of you are too distracted in destiny defining moments. The Bible says, so it was year by year when Hannah would go up to the house of the Lord that Penina would provoke her and she would go to the house of the Lord weeping and without having eaten. Penina understood that the place of Hannah's breakthrough was a place of worship. And that if Hannah went there crying, there is a cry, prayer governors, that you are releasing in that situation that is not purposeful. There is a cry that you are releasing that is murmuring, complaining, and mourning. It's not the right kind of cry. God bless you, Ivy. 
I want somebody to jealously guard and defend a, a, a destiny defining moment they are in. I'm sent on assignment this morning to tell somebody who is in a destiny defining season, a destiny defining moment that do not get distracted. Don't permit Penina to distract you. Don't permit Penina to frustrate you. Don't permit Penina uh, 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 to discourage you. Don't permit Penina to weaponize your weakness. Don't permit Penina to win. Penina appreciated that the time when they visited the house of the Lord was a potential time for what she used to weaponize Hannah, which is her barrenness, to change. So she, she intensified. She intensified her mockery. She intensified her attacks. She intensified her disrespect. There are some of you right now who are in seasons of intensified spiritual warfare. I want you to discern the season you are in. Could it be that you are potentially in a season very close to your breakthrough? Could it be that you are potentially in a season very close to your breakthrough could it be could it be could it be that you are potentially close to a season where god is about to answer your prayer god bless you they love god bless you daughter uh daughter of something <laughs> daughter of zion god bless you linda could it be that your breakthrough is locked up in the season due to moments well curated and well orchestrated by demonic manipulation. Could it be that your answered prayer is locked up in this season by well curated and well orchestrated demonic manipulation? Penina understands that if you go to the house of the Lord, moved and shaken, you will never truly be able to negotiate with the Lord. Your mind is not sound enough. Your mind is not clear enough. Prayer governors, why is it that before a big project is submitted in corporate, every single time a manager intensifies their level of pressure over you? They, 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 they intensify uh, their frustration with you. They intensify making that workplace a, a, a frustrating workplace for you. Anytime before a big project, something that you could use to leverage for your next promotion is submitted. It's like your, 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 your supervisor, your managers begin to intensify the pressure and the stress over you. Could it be that Penina has an appreciation that you are about to show forth the best of yourself on that project? Could it be uh, that, 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 that the manager understands what you are capable of, what you are carrying, the intensity and the gravity of your gift. And anytime you get an opportunity to prove yourself in the workplace, they begin to frustrate you from the left to the right. Just so they can frustrate your results. There are some of you on this broadcast before any big promotion season at, at your workplace. It's like there is an intensification of attacks in your marriage. Your spouse intensifies their level of strife in, in the home. They stop talking to you. All of a sudden you are experiencing a silent treatment. It's a cycle that happens over and over again. All of a sudden they are not, they are not willing anymore. On their conjugal duties. All of a sudden they cook when they want to. All of a sudden they are emotionally abusing you. All of a sudden there's strange fights happening. Sponsored by your marriage. But the attack is actually that big promotion at work. It's promotion season. Why is it that every time it's promotion season. You struggle in your marriage. I was listening to a TikTok video recently. And it said when did you know that your spouse hated you. And prayer governors, I was, I was reading the comments and my heart was broken. <laughs> it said, when did you know your spouse was jealous of you? I was reading the comments and I was frustrated. I said, God, are these things happening in marriages for real, for real?
Somebody said, I was, I, was, I was going to school and every time before a big exam, my spouse would fall sick. She says, without fail, the day before a big exam, my spouse would fall so sick. The man would need to be driven to the hospital. And every time we got there, <laughs> we would wait in the queue, waste a lot of hours in the queue. By the time we, uh, 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 th they need to be diagnosed, they tell, they tell us it's nothing. We don't see anything. She says that every single time, by the time I would go into my exam, I would fail it. Because I spent the whole, after, the whole evening driving someone to a hospital. Another one said uh, the exact same thing happened to me. Uh, my spouse would it would get uh, would get sick, and I would have to do the babysitting just before an exam. Imagine you're a mother of three. You have a big exam before before your big exam. Your spouse all of a sudden can't assist with 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 the kids at night. Penina understood when to attack. Penina understood when to attack. Penina understood seasons and times. She understood when to intensify her attacks. Why is it before a business break, there is always trouble. You always struggle with your mind. You are anxious. You are depressed. You are frustrated. Every time before you sign a new, new client in your business, any time before you get a new tender, any time before you get a new client, there is before a, bus a, a business break breakthrough, there is always a struggle mentally. The Bible says Penina understood when to intensify her attacks. Every time before they went up to Shiloh to worship, she would provoke Hannah and intensify her provocation. There are some of you this morning, God wants you to know that the intensity of the spiritual warfare is a manifestation. It should help you discern that you are in breakthrough season. Jealously defend the season. Jealously guard this season. Jealously defend this season. Refuse to come out of character, Hannah. Refuse to come out of character, Hannah. Refuse to come out of your ordinary way of, of speaking to God, Hannah. Refuse, refuse, refuse. I speak a sound mind over you. In this season of breakthrough, I speak a sound mind over you as God is ushering you into a new dimension. Refuse to be moved. Refuse to be mocked. Refuse to be shaken out of your position. Yes, the enemy is increasing his pressure on you. Uh, but I want you to stay with a sound mind so you can legislate when you step into the temple. Hannah. Penina understood the place of Hannah's breakthrough and she would intensify her, her agitation. She would intensify her mockery every time they were about to go and offer sacrifices. Prayer governors, there are times when the enemy knows you, knows your temperament, knows the way you respond to life circumstances, knows your behavior even more than you know yourself. Because if you knew yourself, you would know that this is just a mockery that is trying to get me out of posture. If you knew yourself well enough, you wouldn't take the bait in the workplace when they try to bait you during promotion season to do something foolish. Why is it every time before a pro promotion, you do some dumb stuff? You make some dumb mistakes, are frustrated by the people around you. These are circumstances, if you, if you think deeply, they are always curated and orchestrated by those around you. There are times when the enemy knows you better than you know yourself. He knows how you behave, how you respond. And so he will frustrate you when you are on the bl on the brink of your breakthrough season. I want to make a prophetic declaration as a servant of God this morning. May that not be your portion. May the enemy not know you better than you know yourself. When Penina knows you better than yourself, Hannah, it is a tragedy. It is a tragedy. But I want to make a declaration that somebody on this broadcast, may the enemy not know you better than you know yourself. I'm seeing self-control being exercised 
sized to God's seasons of destiny, seasons of breakthrough. I'm seeing you jealously defend your seasons of breakthrough by exercising self-control, by exercising a sound mind, by refusing to be shaken, by refusing to be discouraged, by... Prayer governors, I have discovered in my ministry that anytime I have an event, have an event, the enemy will use discouragement to try to frustrate me. Anytime before a conference, a month before a conference, I, I experience intensified, uh, uh, intensified attacks. It is a cycle I have, I have discerned. So now I am aware. So now I know how to navigate seasons where I am birthing out new things or I'm about to do something for God. I, 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 there is always discouragement before an event. I, 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 next week, I am expecting it. I am ready. I am ready for it. <laughs> I am ready for it because I have seen the enemy cycles. Cycles of torment. Cycles of discouragement. Cycles of mockery. I, I, all of a sudden, I have I, I, insecurities I didn't even think I, I had. Uh, all of a sudden, insecurities I thought I had dealt with about my own capacity and capabilities start rising up. The very thing I do every morning, it's very easy for the enemy to start using it as a weapon to discourage me. I have seen the way he, he moves in my ministry and I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared to give him room any longer. I am not prepared to be shaken. I, Hannah, you must get to a place where you understand and you study Penina. And you recognize that unless you contend for your mind, every time you step into the temple, you will never receive a son. You will never receive a promotion. You will never receive a breakthrough. Jealously defend and guard seasons of breakthrough. Guard your heart, guard your mind, because the enemy can perceive when you're about to step into your, into your season of breakthrough. Some of you, the enemy can discern better than you can. So every time the family left for the house of the Lord, Hannah was distressed. She was depressed. She was hopeless. She was in pain. And year after year, prayer governors, she went to the temple and came back bound and barren. But I want to make a prophetic declaration this morning that that shall not be your portion in this season. That you step into your promotion season at work and you come out without your promotion. You step into an opportunity for you to, uh, to step into the right strategic projects in the workplace, but you come out barren and broken, that you have an opportunity in business to scale up, but you come out barren because of Penina. Some of you, you have examinations at work, at school. You have children that are, that are going through examinations in any time before a big examination, the child falls sick has to be hospitalized. The enemy knows when to intensify his attacks. He knows that just before breakthrough, he must intensify his mockery. He must intensify his attacks. Why is it that anytime you and your wife are getting ready to resuscitate that building project you have been working on for years, the strife in your marriage rises up. The disconnect in your marriage rises up. The misunderstanding in your marriage rises up. The frustrations with your children rise up. Panina knows when to attack. Why is it that before you launch that ministry, the opposition around you intensifies? Penina knows when to attack. Penina knows your season of breakthrough. Sometimes prayer governors, even better than you know it yourself. Every time the family left the house of, for the house of the Lord, Hannah was de depressed and hopeless and in pain. And she never received a breakthrough, even though she offered sacrifices year after year. The target was the altar of worship. The target was her breakthrough. The target was a quality of worship. The target was her ability to posture herself for her breakthrough.
Could it be that the enemy is targeting your ability to posture yourself correctly for your breakthrough? To be, to be, to be open enough to receive what God has in store for you. Could it be that what the enemy is truly attacking in your life is your breakthrough? Prayer governors, why is it that before your breakthrough, there are cycles of discouragement that you experience? And why have you done nothing about it? Why have you done nothing about it? Hannah, this morning God is asking you, why have you done nothing about Penina? Why have you done nothing about Penina? There are some here, anytime before a big breakthrough, you encounter and experience demonic manipulations. Manipulation always seeks to control how you act, to take away your ability to think straight, to show up as your heart. The, it takes away your ability to show up as the highest version of yourself. It takes up your ability to show up rightfully postured for your breakthrough. Manipulation will alter your character before destiny defining moments and destiny defining people. You stand in front of your destiny helpers and you are not even yourself. And it happened in this exact same story. The Bible says when the priest saw Hannah, she said, who is this woman who looks like she's drunk? Because Hannah was crying and Hannah was, 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 was praying to the Lord as though a woman was drunk. That's how broken she, she was. Manipulation from Penina will alter your character before destiny defining moments and destiny helpers. If Hannah had not said, listen, man of God, I am not drunk. I am not a mad woman. I am just, I am just desperate. If she had not gotten the opportunity, the man of God would have just passed by her and said, this one is a mad one. Prayer governor, some of you are being passed by your destiny helpers and it is due to manipulation. It causes you to act out of character in your destiny defining moments. A, 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 a manipulation seeks to distort an individual's perception of reality. Every time that Penina would mock and torment Hannah, every time she would harass and increase her pressure on Hannah, Hannah's uh, 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 perception about reality would be distorted. She would be tempted to believe that indeed she is nothing. I haven't given my, 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 my husband a child. Who am I in this marriage? I'm just a broken old woman. I'll never have children. Breakthrough will never be my portion. God will never answer my prayer. God hates me. A, 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 a manipulation seeks to distort an individual's perception of reality. A, a, a manipulation can even include seduction, persuasion, suggestion, blackmail in the spirit, and frustration to induce a certain course of action in your life. Hannah would appear before the priest and instead of seeing a woman who was desperate, the priest saw a woman who was drunk. The priest uh, saw a woman who appeared to be mad. I want to ask you this morning, why have you done nothing about Penina? Why have you done nothing about Penina? Why have you not found a way to maneuver around Penina? Why is it Penina knows more about how to attack you in your destiny defining moments? And why have you done nothing about guarding those destiny defining moments? Why have you done nothing about guarding those uh, sensitive spiritual seasons in your life when your breakthrough is at hand? The, uh, this, this spirit of manipulation, it targets people of destiny people of vision, people of assignment, and it targets moments of opportunity and moments of destiny. Penina, in many instances, is a, no a knowing agent of the enemy. She knows what she's doing or she is acting out of immaturity and Satan therefore leverages on her and uses her to achieve a greater agenda. Some, some people in your life are hosts. 
Some people in your life are, are, are vessels that, the, that, the, that, that have opened themselves up, that have given the enemy foothold for the enemy to use them in your life. To stand in between you and your breakthrough. It doesn't matter whether, whether the penina in your life is a knowing agent or, or is acting out of your immaturity. This morning we are going to pray. I want you to, I want you to type, we are going to pray to, this morning. We are going to pray this morning. Uh, uh, there is different people in, in scripture that we find who have proximity and access and use manipulation to stop the breakthrough of people uh, 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 and to manipulate people into seasons where they never anticipated. The story of Delilah is a good example of a manipulator, of how the spirit of manipulation acts. But there shall be no more manipulation in your life. Delilah used her proximity and her access and manipulated Samson to the point of his demise. The serpent in the Garden of Eden used his access and his audience with the woman to manipulate the woman and her decision making. Judas, a disciple, of Christ used his access and his proximity to manipulate courses of action. This morning we have Penina. Penina had access. Penina had proximity. Penina knew what she was dealing with and she stood right between Hannah and a breakthrough year upon year. But I want to make a declaration as a servant of God as we're about to pray. I want to declare that every demonic agent surrounding you encompassing your household, encompassing your business, encompassing you in the place of your workplace, every demonic agent strategically positioned in your life, working against you, against your destiny, let it be sabotaged by the power of God this morning in the name of Jesus. Penina must let you go. Penina must let you go. Penina must cease and decease. God bless you, Amu. Every GPS planted in your life, every tracking device planted in your life, every monitoring spirit planted in your life, every familiar spirit in your life that is harvesting information. Uh, Hannah, Penina is harvesting information about your seasons and your times. Hannah, Penina is harvesting information about your weaknesses. Hannah, Penina is harvesting information so that she can use it to weaponize against against you but i want to make a declaration that every single one of these spirits working against your destiny or every gps planted in your life let it be switched off right now by the blood of jesus by the blood of jesus no more monitoring your destiny. No more monitoring your assignment. No more perceiving your seasons of breakthrough. No more coming to frustrate and mock and discourage you anytime you are about to experience your breakthrough in corporate, your breakthrough in ministry, your breakthrough in marriage, your breakthrough in friendships, your breakthrough in relationships. In fact, some of you, your friends now know when to, uh, when to sow seeds of doubt and frustration, when to even mock you in a joking manner just before your breakthrough because there is a penina spirit upon them they are friends but they are willful vessels being used strategically in your life to weaponize your weaknesses because you gave them proximity and access ah god bless you manioni every i want to declare prophetically every close enemy ah working in proximity People with access, some of them are relatives, some of them are so close it hurts, some of them are spouses, but I want to make a declaration that every close enemy that has been working in proximity, corrupting the access they have, using the intel they have concerning your life, may that information come to, na to, come to naught, let it amount to nothing, let it be used for strategy and let that strategy fail in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how much access they have to your weaknesses, Hannah. It doesn't matter how much access they have to your struggles, Hannah. It doesn't matter how much access Penina has to your issues. But every 
close enemy working in proximity who has intelligence, spiritual intelligence about you that has been using it against you in your places of breakthrough. May that information come to naught. Let it amount to nothing. Let it amount to nothing. Let it amount to nothing. In the name of Jesus, every arrow sent towards your household, towards your family, towards your marriage, towards your spouse, towards your business, towards you in corporate, in your seasons of breakthrough. Let it lose direction. I want you to type prophetically in the comment section. It's losing direction. Every strategically curated stress levels in your corporate job, when you are on the verge of your breakthrough seasons, that arrow, that arrow, that arrow, let it lose direction in the name of Jesus. Every demonic mandate that seeks to manipulate how you show up in places of your breakthrough, in places where your destiny is, in places where your destiny helpers are, let it scatter, let it scatter, let it scatter in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Every strategy from the pits of darkness, we come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against every evil manipulation in your household, in your workplace, in your business, in your children, in your ministry, in your life, in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray prayer governance. We're going to pray very quickly. We're going to take a minute on every one of these prayer points. I want you to say, Father, expose any penina spirit in my life. And let the sword of vindication and judgment deal decisively with the spirit. Father, expose every penina spirit in my life that seeks to sabotage me in my place of destiny, in my seasons of breakthrough. I want you to say, Father, expose, expose, expose. If you can type it, type it. Father, expose every penina spirit. Father, expose penina spirits in my spouse's life. Father, expose penina spirits in my marriage. Father, expose penina spirits in my businesses. Expose Expose penina spirits in my corporate job. Expose penina spirits in my ministry. In the name of Jesus, manipulative spirits, mocking spirits. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus, spirits that sponsor stress in my life, spirits that sponsor depression in my life, spirits that sponsor hopelessness and pain in my life, spirits that can perceive my seasons of breakthrough. In the name of of Jesus. I pray expose them. Expose them. Expose any penina spirit hiding in my marriage. Expose any penina spirit hiding in my friendships. Expose the spirit that it intensifies provocation and mockery, torment and harassment in the name of Jesus in my seasons of breakthrough. Let it be exposed in the season. Let it be exposed in the season so I can go to Shiloh and receive my breakthrough. So I can Go to the temple of the Lord and receive my breakthrough. Any spirit that has been working against my increase any spirit that has been working against my elevation any spirit that has been working against my answered prayer any spirit that has been working against my season of breakthrough right now be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ Expose them, Lord. Expose these spirits so your people can receive answered prayer. Expose these spirits so your people can receive, and receive their deliverance. Expose, expose these spirits in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Taylor. God bless you, Daisy. Our second prayer point, I want you to say, Father, help me discern destiny-defining moments in my life so I can walk with care and sensitivity when I'm walking in them. There are some of you, you are so ignorant of spiritually sensitive seasons. That's why you fight back when you should just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord.
Last time you were about to receive your breakthrough, you opened up your mouth and you said way too many things. And there was noise in the spirit concerning you. And therefore, that's why you didn't receive your breakthrough. Prayer governors, seasons of breakthrough are so sensitive that, that when it came to Elizabeth and Zachariah, uh, Zachariah's mouth had to be closed by heaven. God had to safeguard the miracle that was taking place. God had to safeguard the breakthrough that was taking place by closing Zachariah's mouth. Who am I speaking to this morning? Seasons of breakthrough are so sensitive that you have to discern them and you have to work, walk circumspectly in them. You have to walk carefully in them. You have to walk according to wisdom in them. I want you to say, Father, help me to discern destiny defining moments. Some moments look like seasons of great attack, but really what's happening is that you are stepping into your new season of breakthrough. You are stepping into your new, new dimension. It is a season of breakthrough. No wonder Penina is intensifying attacks. I want you to say, Father, help me to descend my destiny defining moments. Pray, prayer governor, open up your mouth. Father, may I never miss my destiny defining moments. I pray, I pray for my household. May we never miss our destiny defining moments. I'm praying for, for my marriage. Anytime you have a destiny defining moment for us, may we never miss it. May we never miss it. May we discern it so we can walk circumspectly, so we can walk carefully, so we can walk in wisdom. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray for a sound mind every time I step into destiny defining moments. I pray for a mind that is full of self-control. May I not fight battles you have not anointed me to fight. Losing momentum in places you have not even sent me to. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you help me to discern my destiny defining moments. In the matchless name of Jesus, I'm seeing someone, the Lord is opening up your eyes to discern the season you are in. And you are about to, to experience breakthrough. And the Lord is making you fully aware that what the enemy has been fighting is your breakthrough. What the enemy has been fighting is your answered prayer. Look around you. So many opportunities around you. Why is it that strategically in the season, this is the season where you are most depressed, most anxious, most stressed. Penina is intensifying her mockery. Penina is intensifying her ammunition. Uh, Penina is intensifying her weaponizing of your weaknesses. But I want to make a declaration that as you step into destiny defining seasons, ay, 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 some of you are going to learn to close your mouth. Some of you are going to learn to give the fight to God. Save your energy for the new season God is taking you into, Hannah. Don't fight Penina. No, 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 no. Don't fight Penina. She's not your enemy. Don't fight her. That's, that's, not, that's, that's not it. Uh, strategically position yourself to receive. Despite the, the noise in the atmosphere. Despite the mockery. Despite the torment. Some of you, you are right at the center of a storm. But don't you even focus on the storm. Just focus on receiving receiving from God. I want us to pray this prayer point together. Prayer go governors. I want you to say, Father, I revoke any access I have given to the enemy over my life, my destiny, and my household. I revoke any access I have given to the spirit of manipulation. I, I want you to say, Father, I revoke it. I revoke any access. I, 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 I break any foothold I have given to the enemy in my life. Uh, year upon year, Hannah would give Penina a foothold. It was a foothold of offense. It was a foot. I'm seeing somebody on this broadcast. You have given someone a foothold in your life by being offended. But I want to make a declaration prophetically that God is placing you into a season where you will be unoffendable. I, 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 if this is your word, I want you to type prophetically in the comment section. I am unoffendable in this season, baby. I am unmoved, unshaken, unperturbed because I know exactly what you are attacking. You're not attacking me. You are attacking my breakthrough. You don't want me to hold possession of that which God is trying to give me. That's why you're trying to frustrate me. But I revoke. 
revoke any access I have given to you in my life, Penina. Any opportunity I have given you to offend me. Any opportunity I have given you to, to sow seeds of uh, uh, unforgiveness in me. Any opportunity I have given you to sow seeds of anger and bitterness in me. In this season, baby, I'm unoffendable. I'm not even listening to what you're saying. I'm not even paying attention to your noise. I'm not even paying attention to your distractions because I recognize what you are trying to fight. But I revoke any access I have given to you prior this season, prior this prayer session, prior this moment. I revoke it. I take back my power. I take back the authority I gave you. I revoke any access I have given to my enemies uh, to frustrate me. I want you to say this. I revoke. I revoke the enemy I have given access to in my life. I revoke, I, I revoke access I gave you. I revoke access I gave to the enemy in my marriage. I revoke access I gave to the enemy in my corporate journey. I revoke access I gave to my manager, my supervisor. I revoke access I gave to strategic colleagues in the workplace. I revoke the access I gave them, foothold I gave them in my life to frustrate, to torment, to mock, to weaponize my weaknesses. I revoke. I re you no longer have that power over me. Woo! Come on, somebody. God bless you, Puri. They, they no longer have that power over you, Winnie. They no longer have that power over you, Tiny. They no longer have that power over you. Re take back your access. I revoke access that I've given to the enemy over my life and over my household in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Nyota. Uh, God bless you. I want you to say with me, Father, may you shame my tormentors. May they live long enough to see my testimony. Ooh, shame my penina. May you shame my tormentors. Ratala vasona nanamando rosoko. Laketala brako soko. May you heap my tormentors with shame. May they live long enough to see me hold my baby. May they live long enough to see me step into my promised land. May they live long enough uh, to, to see me step into my new position and my new role in corporate. May they live long enough. May they live long enough to step to, to see me step into my corner office. May they live long enough. Let them live long. Let Penina. Let, let, let us see. Let us see the goodness of the Lord over my life. Oh, Somebody pray. Uh, shame my tormentor. Shame uh, my mocker. Shame the person that strategically wanted to keep me bound and barren. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord shame your tormentors. May they live long enough to see you hold your child. May they live long enough to see God wipe away any traces of that which they used to weaponize against you. May, may, may they live long enough for God to wipe away any traces of your past. Woo! Your past life that you are, you, are so, you are so ashamed of. May they live long enough to see God wipe away that slate and give you a clean one. They used to weaponize it against you. Call you, uh, call you all sorts of names because of where you are coming from. Call you all sorts of names because of your uh, uh, the things that you couldn't do. Call you all sorts of names. But I pray in the name of Jesus that may your enemies lo live long enough to see you hold your testimony. God bless you, Zani. God bless you, Carrie Ann. I want you to pray this, this last prayer with me. I want you to say, Father, may I be favored despite the efforts of my adversaries. My God, my God, my God, my God. Father, 
cause, cause me to be favored despite the efforts of my adversaries. They are those that are my adversaries. They wish me harm and I've done nothing to them. But Father, may I be favored despite the efforts of my adversary. In my workplace, any character assassinations against me, any people speaking ill of me in seasons of my breakthrough, seasons of promotion, seasons when those short lists are being given, I pray this morning that may I be favored despite the efforts of Penina. May I be favored despite the efforts of my enemies. May I be favored despite the efforts of my adversary. Lift up your voice and say no manipulation done. No manipulation. No manipulation done over my life is going to stop me from experiencing the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, let me be favored. The Bible says that Hannah was favored still by her husband despite her barrenness. In the name of Jesus, I pray for my household. I pray for myself. I pray for my ministry, house of hosting heaven. I pray for our businesses as a family. I pray for our jobs. I pray for 1,200 families represented. I declare that may we be favored despite the efforts of our adversaries. In the matchless name of Jesus, may we be favored despite the efforts of our enemies. May we be favored despite the efforts of Penina in our lives. Despite the efforts of our enemies, we will continue to be favored. In the name of Jesus. Kaleko ratia zantena mayando. Lakatela brako soko. I want to make a prophetic declaration that may the Lord scatter every strategic device hatched through sabotage in your life. Every strategic device hatched through manipulation by peninas in your life. May the Lord deliver you. May the Lord scatter the wicked agenda of the enemy. May the Lord rub off your name from the calendar of hell. In Jesus' mighty name. Every place where your breakthrough was hanging. Like Hannah. Every place where your son was hanging. Every place where your answer to prayer was hanging. This morning I speak as shaking. As a servant of God. By the power of uh, that is in the blood of Jesus. I speak a shaking in the atmosphere. Breakthroughs that were hanging in the atmosphere. Breakthroughs that were hanging in the atmosphere. Fall down this morning. Fall down this morning. Fall down this morning. Breakthroughs that were delayed. Breakthroughs that were pending. Breakthroughs that were in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. Let them fall. Let them fall. Let them fall. Let breakthrough fall on this altar of prayer God may your mercy locate us this morning and let your breakthroughs in our marriages breakthroughs in our businesses breakthroughs in our finances breakthroughs in our our relationships our friendships breakthroughs I see somebody you needed fruit of the womb just like Hannah this word is for you receive your breakthrough receive your breakthrough receive your breakthrough Receive fruit of the womb in the name of Jesus. May the Lord cause miraculous conceptions to take place in your life in this season. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Akotele beshika. Azakata lavayando koto. Ebrakadibala mando seke. In the matchless name of Jesus. Somebody celebrate like you have already, you are, you are already holding your son. Like, like the answer has already come out. Like you, like you or somebody celebrate, celebrate Jesus. Somebody celebrate, celebrate Jesus. I want you to say congratulations to me. No more manipulations in my seasons of breakthrough. May the Lord guard your mind in seasons of breakthrough. May the Lord train your hands for battle in seasons of breakthrough. May the Lord teach you how to navigate seasons where you are waiting for him to cause you to step into your next dimension, just like Hannah. Because if you keep going to the house of the Lord year by year, provoked by the enemy, weeping, without eating, crying, distressed, mocked, tormented, you will never be postured for your breakthrough.
Oh, but I see a new army of people rising up. I'm seeing a new army of people rising up that are saying we are unmoved, unshaken, unoffendable. We understand seasons and times. We can discern when our breakthrough is at hand and the enemy is trying the best he can to manipulate the situation. That's right. It's your season. It's your time. No more manipulations in the name of Jesus. Congratulations, 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 congratulations to you and your household. I'm celebrating God with you, prayer governors. Thank you for connecting to this morning prayer. Well done for waking up. Well done for say, staying up late. Well done for connecting to this time of recognize that the reason why God had you here is because you are about to step into your season of breakthrough. It wasn't apparent when you arrived <laughs> on this morning prayer, but give it, give it this, this word will age very well. <laughs> this, this, this word will age very well. God wouldn't have had you show up in the place of prayer this morning unless there was, there was a breakthrough at hand. So 275 people share the broadcast. May God richly bless you and make you a partaker of the blessing that's connected to those that share the ministration of his word. 1,200 families represented on this morning altar. May the Lord minister deliverance in your families in the name of Jesus Christ. And as I've made a dec declaration, every demonic agent working against you and your household, your destiny, let it be sabotaged in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak deliverance into your homes. I speak peace into your homes. I speak life into your homes. I speak prosperity into your homes. I speak fruitfulness into your homes. Fruitfulness into your homes. In Jesus' name, no more barrenness. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Prayer governors, thank you so much for connecting to this time of prayer. Once again, we are super excited about our upcoming uh, prayer gathering. Our first physical gathering. Our prayer gathering in Johannesburg. Uh, it is going to be held at the Fortress venue. It's in Edenville. We have already released our first batch of tickets. We, we thought we were going to host 200 of you, but you said no. Currently, we are overbooked by uh, 52 people at the moment and there is a waiting list that is growing. Uh, prayer governors, if we release another link, I pray in the name of Jesus that you take advantage. Just get yourself a ticket because by the time we finished, people were now already able to grab tickets for themselves. Um, so I want you when that, when that second link uh, comes out to quickly rush, if you can't rush, please make sure that you send us your details, name, surname, email address, and mobile number, and make sure that you are in the room on the 27th. It's a morning session, 9 a.m. until 1 a.m. We're going to have a time of intense prayer, a time of interceding, speaking into the new month for our households in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. It's going to be a powerful, beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. Um, and if you are feeling led in any way, I said it's free for you. <laughs> it's free for you, but anything that's free for you, you must always know someone is paying for it. They just don't mention who's praying, paying for it. So um, it is a free event. The tickets are absolutely free, uh, but somebody is pay paying the bill. And I said, my husband and I are footing that bill. But if you would like to hold, hold hands with us, uh, the Bible says there was a time when Moses needed his hands lifted. He was lifting up his hands and he was praying to God. And the Bible says, he became tired and there were people that needed to come and lift up his hands so he could continue to have his hands lifted praying unto the lord so you have if you're just sensing a leading and you're saying woman of god this is our first ever a, a, a physical session you don't even need to be in the country you don't even need to be south african you could be an international person that just says woman of god i have something small but i want to tap into what god is doing in johannesburg maybe you are you are doing it so that we can come to your city soon you're just saying listen whatever 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 wind will be will be in that atmosphere whatever wind will be in that atmosphere whatever the lord releases into that place i'm just connecting to it by faith um and you want to hold hands with us so that we can uh pay for that venue please definitely contact me you don't need to contact me you have our paypal account you can just uh, you can also partner with us via paypal some of you have our banking details you can just partner via banking details if you need our banking details we'll give it to you uh but 
it's going to be free for everybody else in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Someone says, uh, this is the first time I'm seeing you and I'm blessed. Glory to Jesus. I'm encouraged to hear that. Someone says, come to Cape Town uh, next, please. We are coming to Cape Town in November. So one way or the other, Cape Town, I am going to see you. All right. So we're super excited about that. Prayer governors, God bless you. God increase you. Uh, may God preserve and protect your families in the name of Jesus. Kulu fellow, God bless you. Kulu fellow and girls, Kulu fellow and team, I didn't see your names. Kulu fellow and I know, I know my girls too well. I know your names too well. I did not see your names. Kulu fellow, you have some explaining to do. You and Rachel and Mo have some explaining to do because I have not seen your name. <laughs> <laughs> Kababy, I saw your name. Kababy, I, 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 we issued you a ticket. I, I know you are coming. I, 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 I know, I know my name. I, I, I am bad with names, but God is making me better with names day by day. So I can see the names and I know this one is coming. <laughs> this one is coming. Carpool your way in. I, 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 during morning service, ask, is there anyone? I see someone saying, is anyone coming from Soweto? Uh, get into the same car if you don't have transportation. Find Uber money. If you, if you, if you don't have a car, uh, get yourself in the room on the 27th. And we're super excited to be hosting you. Like I said, we had a number, but the Lord superseded our number and we continue, we, our waiting list is continuing to grow. Uh, so we are believing God for something that is beyond what we had even planned. Tropical Nurse, thank you so very much for subscribing. That's a way of partnering with the platform. Prayer Governors, I'm going to see you tomorrow morning. It's going to be Thursday. It's a travail Thursday. Come getting, come ready to press into the presence of God. Come ready to pray in Jesus' name. Um, uh, Bree says it is her birthday. Uh, I wanted, uh, uh, she says I wanted to be extraordinary. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we speak more life and more open doors in this new season. May that which was difficult become easy in this new year. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, may you continue to grow in wisdom. Wisdom that, cause, that causes results. Wisdom that, 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 that unlocks results. The kind of wisdom that unlocks results for you, Brie. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Prayer governors, I'm celebrating God with you. I wish I could take testimonies, but um, I, I, my... I, my, my my, my 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 support system today only gave me bandwidth until eight o'clock so i need to go and be with my little boy uh in jesus mighty and wonderful name prayer governors see you tomorrow morning and remember uh we we are standing in faith with you and your families and your households that any manipulation that had been taking place any penina spirit that had been leveraging uh over over your life and, and standing in the way of you and your breakthrough in the name of Jesus, let it be broken. Amen and amen. This video will be up on you on YouTube at 1 p.m. Um, so if you need to listen to it again, if you're saying this was my word, please uh, uh, check out the premiere at 1 p.m. S-A-S-T. Amen and amen. Our YouTube platform is House of Hosting Heaven. God bless you, prayer governors. See you tomorrow.